Hello, welcome to Rock Your Block, where we are highlighting individuals who are making an impact in our community. I'm Larry Laws, your host. On today's segment of First Home Alliance, we have a special guest coming in to our show for the first time. She is an amazing young lady that has done a lot of great work for nonprofits. She has experience in event planning and fundraising. Her resume is very impressive. Presently, she serves as chairman of the fundraising committee of the First Home Alliance Board of Directors. Please welcome to our show, Netta Aishi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Netta. No, sorry for messing up your last name. Oh, tell us, I mean, tell us your name. Everybody again. does that. It's yes. Aish. Aish. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But Netta, well, uh, one is welcome to the show. Thank you. And two, welcome aboard for the per First Home Alliance yes. Board of Directors. I'm so excited. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, just to kick it off, tell us a little bit about you. I'm a Seattle native, um, so born and raised in the Pacific Northwest. I went to the Evergreen State College and pretty much um, decided that I was going to come out to Washington, D.C. to have an adventure and just, you know, experience what it is out here. So I'm really excited to be here. Yes. Well, you know, I looked at your resume and, um, and uh, found out a lot about, you know, things on paper. Mm -hmm. But, you know, how did you find out about First Home Alliance? Um, I actually heard about it through friends. So, yeah, I was, I was pretty interested in it. Um, it sounded like something that I would be into because I... I like helping people find homes and stay in their homes, so, uh, that's yeah. Great. That's great. Yes, and so I wanted uh, you to share um, some about your pro uh, professional experience. Mm -hmm. And so uh, tell us about the organization you worked for prior to coming here. Okay, I worked for Peace Out. I was a mm -hmm. nonprofit director and um, a Peace Out program instructor. So basically it was a youth and teen philanthropy program, and we also expanded to um, subsidized housing and transitional housing, and we worked a lot with at-risk youth as well. Okay. And what were some of the things that you did specifically there, your job? Um, I did the kindness campaign. And so what we would do is when we had a class, we had all of the kids sit in a circle, and it was sort of an icebreaker. And everybody would write an anonymous comment about their classmate, um, and it was you know supposed to be something kind and sweet. And they'd put it into a little bucket, and once we started reading those, you know, every student would just start lighting up because all of a sudden, you know, hey, somebody noticed that about me. So after that, what it did is it ended up that, you know, because they had such a positive experience, they would go out into the community and just radiate positivity, and mm -hmm. they would have, you know, anything that they saw, like if, if they had a comment that they wanted to tell somebody, oh, you're really sweet, you're really nice, they would tell them, and then that kind of continued on it throughout the community. So Yes, and who was your, your target audience to, to come in to, uh, to benefit from those? Um, pretty much anybody. Yes. Um, it could be, you know, somebody in the grocery store. It could mm -hmm. be a student. It started as students, you know, just being yes. around in school so that everybody, you know, started getting along because it can be tough being in school. Yes. So. Yes. Any of those uh, particular... Uh, 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 stories that you can share? Um, yes. There was one student who kind of felt like she didn't belong. Um, I remember, you know, getting familiar with her and making her comfortable. She was very timid, very shy, mm -hmm. and it turned out that she got the most compliments out of everybody in the circle, and that just lit her up, and she just, she literally just opened up the whole class period and made so many friends, so I was really excited about that. Yes. Yeah. And so you as an instructor, what were some of the things that you, you did to bring, uh, you know, substance to those groups? Um, so we got to, what I did is, cho like, we'd break the kids into groups, mm -hmm. and each one would work on it as a team. And once they chose their nonprofit, they would each fundraise for it together as a group. Okay. And then at the very end, what they would do is they'd put on their own fundraiser. And these are, you know, these are teens. And by the end of it, a majority of them usually raised about $1,000, which good. is pretty impressive for, for young kids. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. And then after raising those funds, then what did they do with the money? They would write big, giant checks. Yes. And then they would present it to their chosen nonprofit. And yes. so they, they got to donate, you know, and see that their money went to their cause. And those nonprofits would tell them, you know, like, if it was a humane society, you know, just... $20 gets them a bag of food. And so the kids would see that even though it might not sound like a lot, mm -hmm. it actually makes an impact and it adds up. Yes. So. What uh, drew you to this type of work? 
Uh, <laughs> well, I love kids. Mm -hmm. um, I pretty much just want something that's fulfilling. And, you know, I just think that it, nonprofit work, y you have a different role every day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily just something where, you know, oh, today I'm going to come in and do this, this, and this. You could start doing something, and then you kind of go on an adventure by the end of the day and meet a whole bunch of people and, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah it sounds like, you know, you can sort of get, uh, get away from other things. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to time of getting away, or getting away from um, the office, what do you like to do? Um, like hobby-wise? Yes. I, I love the outdoors. Mm -hmm. I love hiking, camping. Um, I love my dog. I love taking her out to play. She goes nuts after her ball. I mean, she's obsessed with it. And during the winter times, I like to do snowshoeing. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. You, you mentioned, uh, did you say camping? Yes, camping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any of the old stories you like to share? Uh, yeah, there's been quite a few yeah. fun experiences with that. Um, I mean, you're just on it making memories with your friends. Mm -hmm. And there was one time that it was 2 o'clock in the morning, and I woke up to my head kind of, you know, I felt like something was hitting underneath of my head. Mm -hmm. And I lifted up my pillow, and there was just this this thing that was just popping up from the bottom of the tent and mm -hmm. it freaked me out and I you know smacked my friend awake and she was like what the heck is that oh my gosh and so we started freaking out and eventually she just smacked it back down mm -hmm. and then the next day when we pulled up our tent we realized that it was moles coming up in the night and it freaked us out so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Well, yeah. You know, um yeah, so some of those things you like to enjoy. Uh, what about uh, maybe some things that really um, um, uh, makes you excited about, uh, you know, going further into this work? In nonprofit work? Yes. I really would look forward to just meeting the different people out here. People mm -hmm. are definitely different on the East Coast and the West Coast. So, you know, it's it's been adventurous to meet everybody and just be out there and see all of the amazing opportunities over here so yes and so would you call this work more of a people business oh absolutely yes yeah for sure <laughs> yes <laughs> now uh, I understand you had some uh, post high school education that you uh, what did you do while you was in uh, college what like are you talking about um, how I took advanced courses first mm -hmm. yeah so when I was in high school I took advanced courses I went to college early um, I got, you know, my Associates of Arts and Sciences and then certified in Ethnic and Gender Studies. Mm -hmm. So by the time I graduated high school, I already had my two-year degree. Great. Yeah. Great. And so you was an awarded um, a President's Award for Education. Yes. And so tell us about that. So it's basically a nomination process. Your teachers, you know, refer you and it goes through all of these things. and. You have to have a really good um, record of like leaderships, you know, civic engagement, community service, and an amazing grade point average. Okay. And I was selected out of you know everybody in my school, so I was super stoked about that. Yeah. Yes. And how did you bring some of those uh, things from uh, school uh, into the position that you worked? So pretty much the organization skills. Um, the analytical skills, mm -hmm. things that you learn that can help you strategize to continue to move the organization forward. I definitely felt like just the intense research processes that I did in, in college to help a lot. So. Okay, yeah, and uh, I know that you did a lot of different campaigns yes. uh, there at your last position uh, that you held, but uh, I think the, the military is something that you have uh, done some work around. Yes. Uh, have you done any type of campaigns with military? I did. Um, we had a community connector program with the City of University Place in the 16th Cab. Mm -hmm. And basically it was so that their, their community knew that we cared about them and they felt like it was home. Mm -hmm. So their families had you know, a support system while they were gone. And what we did is, is I took the, the kindness a step forward and basically organized a campaign where we got every single soldier a letter um, and so it was basically a military soldier letter writing campaign okay. and we got over 2,200 letters and care package items even and I mean it, they were just blown away by the amount of care. So. Yes and so um, how was you able to get people involved in, uh, into that project? 
Um, there's a lot of nonprofits in our area as well. And so we all coordinated together and worked as a team, mm -hmm. you know, and so they'd gather some postcards here and, you know, even at the schools when we did, you know, our Peace Out programs in there, a lot of the students would write letters. And there was other events where the mayor and I went to uh, University Place Sunfest and we gathered, like we stayed out there all day and gathered close to a thousand just there, so. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, um, I want you to, um, you know, think about some of those things that you're going to, uh, that you're just going to bring over mm -hmm. to First Home Alliance. Yeah. Okay. And so after the break, we're going to get to those things. Okay. Okay. But uh, we're about to take a short break. Uh, but before we go, I would like to remind you that First Home Alliance is a HUD-approved housing counseling agency serving the National Capital Area. If you're a first-time home buyer or a homeowner in need of mortgage assistance, I encourage you to visit the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development website to find a HUD-approved housing counseling agency in your area. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. The combined federal campaign and United Way Federation impacts quality of life nationally and across the globe. First Home Alliance, a community-based nonprofit housing counseling agency approved by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to provide, to provide comprehensive housing assistance programs to help low to moderate income and veteran families. First Home Alliance is a CFC approved charity and proud member of the United Way of the National Capital Area. Welcome back. You're watching Rock Your Block. I'm your host, Larry Laws of First Home Alliance. And if you're just now tuning in, we're joined today with Netta of Falls Church, Virginia. Netta, before the break, uh, we were talking about uh, the military writing campaign. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit more about the campaign, about the kids that was involved mm -hmm. and uh, what they was actually doing. Yes, um, so we had a bunch of kids that drew some really adorable pictures mm -hmm. and you know wrote different things like, um, one wrote, you're pretty legit, and it was just in their cute little handwriting and it had a, a picture of a soldier with a tank. And so there were a whole bunch of adorable pictures that, you know, were, were shared with the soldiers as well. And some of the feedback that we got from them was that those were actually the best because they just, they loved that these kids took the time to draw them pictures and send them some really cute postcards. Yes. Now, so uh, I know you said that the uh, soldiers said that it was in the best. That uh, that some of those uh, soldiers that was in the field was they facing. Uh, you know, uh, they share with you their situation where they were. Yes. Yes. There's some days that are just excruciatingly tough on them, um, and they're facing a lot of challenges when they're out there. Mm -hmm. And when they get kind of surprised with this adorable little postcard, it, it reminds them that you know they're they're going to be headed home soon, and yes. you know, and it cheers them up and. Um, they also told me that some of them would hang them up, you know, around so that everybody could see the ones that they got. Yes, yeah. and I think you were telling me about maybe uh, someone was involved in the writing. Mm -hmm. uh, was there a story of uh, someone that was that was on this side of writing those stories? Yes. So there was a few experiences where um, I noticed a lady was writing a couple of postcards mm -hmm. and um, she went to go put them in our mailbox because we had this cute mailbox for them to put the postcards into and after she did that she started crying and so I went up to her and I was like you know um, is there anything I can do to help you know like what's going on and she basically said that it was emotional for her because she was writing those postcards in honor of somebody that she had lost. Yeah. So that was a big deal for me. Okay. And so uh, would you uh, say that that military campaign was probably one of the most significant campaigns that you worked? Absolutely. I think that it definitely touches your heart and it makes an impact because 2,200 people came together and showed our military how much they mean to us. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. And so now in your, your role with uh, <laughs> First Home Alliance, uh, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to bringing to, uh, to First Home Alliance and the Board of Directors? I would absolutely love to involve the veteran and military community more. Mm -hmm. I think that the programs we offer can definitely benefit them. You know, it's already hard enough to, to continually have to make a home somewhere, and I think that, that First Home Alliance would be a perfect place for them to come to and figure out how to, you know, get mortgage assistance or work on their credit or just, you know, um, basically learn more about financial literacy. And okay. 
that's one less stressful thing for them to worry about because they can come to the program, they can get some yummy food, and they can just like, <laughs> you know, sit there and learn all they can. And, and they, the best part is they don't have to be in trouble to, to benefit from the services. Get, get they can correct. just, yeah, they can just come out if they want to lower their mortgage or, you know, or even just meet some friends. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that is great. And uh, I think that, yeah, of course, uh, uh, with you serving on the board, it's going to help us uh, further, you know, our efforts in the community. Yeah. And so uh, we're glad that you have those fundraising skills and uh, event planning. Yes. Uh, now, are there something, uh, maybe uh, something you've already taken up on the board since you uh Yes, we're actually, you know, doing quite a few things. One would be the Do More 24 campaign, mm -hmm. and that's basically a day here in Washington, D.C., where everybody comes together, all the nonprofits, and they fundraise for that day for their nonprofits. Okay. So we're planning on having a little event for that where we combine the online donations with an in-person activity Super. so that we can just, you know, hit two birds with one stone and motivate people and show them you know, in person what their impact is. So I'm really looking forward to that. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so uh, this is an um, uh, annual event. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I'm glad to have you aboard uh, so that Thank we you. can, uh, you know, uh, uh, further our reach and things yeah. that we do in the community. And so um, uh, that's to do more 24. And so what are some of the other um, uh, fundraising activities that you have uh, in the, I guess, uh, coming up? Uh, we have an annual event where I'm really looking forward to working on. Um, in the past, it's been a silent auction. Mm -hmm. I'd really love to make it a live auction with an elegant evening okay. and just, you know, really, like, bring together more of our community and make it an exciting night where they get to come out and pretty much party for a cause. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and just, you know, meet friends, have a lot of um, different auction items that they can bid on. And yeah, it's going to be a blast. Yes, and uh, and so in reference to some of the uh, uh, outreach, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, uh, get people to come, what are any ideals or thoughts on how we're going to outreach to the community? I think that pretty much doing, I w I would actually like to continue the kindness campaign. I think that that's an amazing way to to reach out to people, and I try to think what else. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I'm quite <laughs> sure that you're going to enhance what we're already doing. Yes. Yes, yes. And so um, I understand that uh, you know a little bit about uh, maybe online um, Online marketing. fundraising. Yes, mm -hmm. fundraising. Yes. What are some of the um, campaigns that have you done online? Um, we did one for Seattle where basically, you know, the, the company that was running it matched our funds. Mm -hmm. And so all of our friends would get together online, and it was just this really exciting um, online fundraising campaign where you know somebody would say oh well if I donate uh, you know if, so, if five people donate twenty dollars I'll donate a thousand. Oh great. Yeah and yeah. so it just motivated everybody and then more and more money started coming in and then just knowing that that, that other uh, company was going to be doubling okay. our donations so w you could raise five thousand dollars and then by within 24 hours you're already at ten. Yes. Yes, so, that's yeah. great. A good match program. Yeah. Yes, and so definitely uh, that is something that we uh, would like for you to, uh, uh, you know, uh, move us in that direction mm -hmm. as well. Yes, and so um, what do you have, what is the outlook for you? What are you doing now, and what are you, what are you uh, moving towards? In terms of hobbies or in terms of career? Well, career. Okay. Um, well, I ha kind of have one that's like a hobby slash career, and okay. yeah, it's, it's basically I own a boutique and I'm really into fashion and I think that it, it's just exciting for me to be able to be part of that and then contribute back to nonprofits as well. So, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what would you have to say to others that may have some type of whether hobby or uh, job or mm -hmm. uh, career mm -hmm. of, of giving back, connecting that back to, to nonprofits? I think that for me, social enterprise and social entrepreneurship is a very, um, it's something that I'm pretty passionate about because mm -hmm. I think that any opportunities that you can to do something good for the community, you should. And I think that that's a sustainable business model because people want to do good. And so when they, you know, if they make and go and, and shop at a certain location, 
you know, they're, they're giving back to those nonprofits and continuing the amazing services in our community. Yes. And so how would you speak to that in reference to the nonprofits, how their, uh, their funds is uh, basically uh, regenerated back to their programs? Uh, how would you uh, share that with a potential uh, a marketer? Um, I would definitely say that, you know, more people actually purchase more items just because they know that they're going to be giving back in the process. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just that and you get cause marketing. So okay. you get to have really good public outreach, have a really good public image, and you're doing great things for the community. Like you could you could choose any of the nonprofits, whether it's Wounded Warrior Project or First Home Alliance or Peace Out or the City of University Place Volunteer Center. I mean, it, it benefits everything and it keeps those communities strong, vibrant, and continues to let people build homes here. Okay. All right. And so you actually have a, um, a app. Yes. And so tell us about that. It's called Poshmark. Okay. And it's basically a closet boutique that I have. Okay. And yeah, I. I think that it's a way for me to, one, have a really uh, fun experience with my hobby, and two, get people involved so that they, uh, everything that they do, it's, it's basically helping me give back to the community. Okay. Yeah. A little bit more about this, uh, uh, the boutique, I guess? It's a fashion slash vintage type boutique, and so you can go in there and get designer labels, and um, yeah, and just... I have different types of clothes and just things that they can, you know, mix and match and create their own outfits. Okay. So. And so, and, and do you have uh, some type of uh, website as well to go along with that? I do, yes. It's called shopthesunset.com mm -hmm. and it, it's, like I said, it's a way for me to give back to the community and just something really positive that, that'll help me do that. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, again, I want to say thanks for coming out today. Thank you. And I want to say thanks for joining the, the First Home Alliance team. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we go again, I would like for you to tell us how to, that we can download this app mm -hmm. and also tell us that website again. Okay. So you can go into the App Store and you type in Poshmark. Okay. And to find me, just do at Pink Sunset. And for the, the site, you would just type in, you know, shopthesunset.com. Okay, one more time. Shopthesunset.com. Okay. <laughs> All right, Winetta, I want to say again. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming on to the show today. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, I hope you found this interview with Netta as interesting as I did. If you would like additional information or would like to connect or in contact Netta, please contact her by her email below. Now it's time to check our inbox and see how we can help rock your block. This is where we share a recent question sent to us from you, our viewer and audience, from f about financial stability and housing. Today's question comes from Stafford, Virginia. When should I maintain a balance on my credit card? To answer your question, I'm going to explain the, the difference of using a credit card to maintain good credit and how to use a credit card to improve your credit score. To maintain good credit when you're using a credit card, be responsible. Use your available credit at your convenience and pay your balance off monthly. Always pay on time and never charge above your maximum limit. If the balance is paid before the cycle date, you prevent interest charges from accumulating on your account. Now, on the other hand, to use your credit card to improve your credit score, you need to, you need to make a record of on-time debt payments. Maintain a balance on your card long enough so that it shows that you are responsible and can be trusted to pay your debt on time over an extended period of time. You must demonstrate your ability to use credit wisely. Never use more than 30% of your available balance. Make regular payments above the minimum on time as agreed. I'm your host, Larry Laws of First Home Alliance, and it's been my pleasure sharing with you the services we provide in the community. If you have a question about financial fitness or how to make your dream of home ownership a success, send your question to our inbox and tune in to our next show to see if your question was selected to be shared with our audience. You can easily get more information about our services by visiting our website. Thank you for watching today's segment of First Home Alliance, and join us next time to rock your block.
Flex Boot Camp is a pilot program. We are seeking applicants that are serious about getting into financial shape and willing to take on the Financial Literacy Education Experience Challenge. We ask candidates for a 12-month commitment of financial management conditioning. We offer 10 financial education modules augmented by monthly confidential one-on-one -on -one financial coaching sessions. We are committed to help you reach your financial goal. Your success is our success. If you are interested, please visit our website for more information.